Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition Stop Stories. Major infrastructure development has been earmarked for Labri Ogier, including housing projects. The second phase of the Culdesac Bridge reconstruction project commences, and Free Kick Foundation donates to the Boys Training Center. Major infrastructure development is earmarked to begin in the constituency of Labri. The announcement was made at the installation of a new constituency council. Hamadi Mark reports. The installation of the Labri Oje Constituency Council brought about the announcement of major development plans set for the constituency. Minister for External Affairs, International Trade, Civil Aviation and Diaspora Affairs, and Parliamentary Representative for Labri, Honorable Alva Baptiste. So in collaboration with the newly installed local government entity, made mention of several infrastructural plans for the community of Oji, including the construction of a multipurpose center. We have been to Oji and identify a site for the erection of the multipurpose center. We have identified the site for the multipurpose court. We have identified the, the site for a playing field in Upper Oji. In this endeavor to revitalize the constituency, Honorable Baptiste also announced an initiative for the village of Labry aimed at increasing the employment rate among youth, particularly young women of the constituency. In the Labry village, we are looking at the Labry beachfront for the transformation that I spoke of when I was launched many years ago. We have developed the concepts and we are further fine-tuning the concepts. The entire beachfront will be transformed. Economic infrastructure will be erected there to make it available to the unemployed members of our constituency, especially young women who are looking for an opportunity. And consistent with that youth economy, we will have a serious transformation of the beachfront to ensure that Labri can exist and survive independent of any cash flow from the government of St. Lucia. Minister in the office of the Prime Minister with responsibility for housing and local government, Honorable Richard Frederick, implored the councillors to work diligently towards the advancement of their constituency. So take your responsibility with every degree of seriousness. Let your consciences be your guide. Please remember the needy. In whatever you do, remember the poorer ones. They need us. They need us. Some of them can't talk for themselves, but they need us. Take care of them. And God will take care of you. Thank you much. The installation of the Labri Oji Constituency Council was held for the first time in the community of Oji. Joseph Joseph was appointed as chairperson and Lidra Chico as deputy chair. From the Government Information Service, Hilmadi Mark reporting. Minister for Home Affairs Honorable Dr. Virginia Albert Poyat is this week reviewing recommendations stemming from an in-depth management meeting with divisional heads of the St. Lucia Fire Service. The minister says she was particularly keen on hearing the concerns and experiences emanating from the outpost stations. The highlight of the meeting, she said, was the overwhelming call by firemen for a new fire service headquarters. The high point of our discussion has been the long overdue fire, fire headquarters. And that has been brought to the attention of the Prime Minister and the Cabinet of Ministers. And they are starting to give some consideration to that idea. So we are still exploring the possibility of a suitable location and how soon we are going to start the whole exercise. So we know our police also need the headquarters. We know the firemen need the headquarters. So we have a lot on our hands, but we are trying to manage it as best as we can. 
Fire officers also expressed some concerns with the reception of the public on accident sites, but noted that most sections of the public remain very cooperative. In the discussion with the fire officers, they do have um, challenges with the public because the request for the use of ambulance is very frequent, it's very high, and they have limited um, transport to do that. They also face challenges with some members of the public who are giving some unnecessary calls. And when they arrive at the site, they felt that these did not really deserve ambulance service. And there are some areas that are inaccessible. And it's very difficult for them to reach those sites to help these people, to take them for, um, for the type of service that they need at the hospital. Another critical issue that came up for discussion during the high-level meeting was whether the ambulance service should be removed from the operations of the St. Lucia Fire Service and be placed under the purview of the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs. Members of the Craft and Dry Goods Vendors Association are participating in a training seminar on COVID-19 protocols. We get the details in this report by Rajvaro Lawrence. The Ministry of Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information, in collaboration with the Department of Environmental Health, is facilitating a three-day COVID-19 protocol training for vendors of the arcade and craft market. Tourism Officer Samantha Charles explained that upon completion, vendors will receive a Certificate of COVID Compliance from the Ministry of Tourism. This enables vendors the ability to leverage their status as safe operators as well as increased marketability as they will be listed on the ministry's website where their status will be featured as well. The intention of the training is to really bring to the attention of the vendors the health and safety guidelines that has been set aside for the operations and those guidelines came about by virtue of um, a number of site visits to, the, to both establishments in the ministry and Ministry of Health to determine um, example where um, proper exiting is required, social distancing, etc. So following those site visits, a COVID action plan was developed for the vendors arcade and that will be replicated for the craft market and the, the um, protocols were developed out of that um, COVID action plan. So we're hoping that at the end of the week, we have as many vendors as possible trained to have subsequent sessions next week to cover the rest of the vendors and that they understand what their safe operations entail, what they should do and should not do, and how they engage their clients, visitors, and locals when they come to the craft market and the vendors. Approximately 90 vendors will be trained at the three day workshop. President of the St. Lucia Craft and Dry Goods Vendors Association, Peter Isaac, highlighted that the training will allow vendors to be able to once again benefit from the tourism sector, especially with the cruise season having recently commenced. This exercise here now is to make sure that the vendors understand the protocol, understand how to behave and the approach and the regulations and the rules so that they could behave as as accordingly to how we're supposed to. Um, so we are, uh, we are pleased that this is happening in collaboration with the Council of the Council of Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Tourism, the Defenders Association, and we are happy because we want the facilities that we have vendors there who are making out a living from the tourism industry to, to be a part of it, so to speak. And therefore, if they come to the workshop and, and they, they are considered to be people who are trained and they are COVID certified, then the facility with a few of it can be COVID certified. And that's the, the important thing for us because we think that we have been making a, a significant contribution to the development of, of tourism basically and that we would like to, to participate, we would like to be involved, especially with the crew sector. The training is scheduled for the 2nd to the 4th of November 2021. From the Government Information Service, Raj Varo Lawrence reporting. The Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Transport, Physical Development and Urban Renewal has announced the commencement of the second phase of the Kalisak Bridge Reconstruction Project. The works will involve the construction of the bridge's superstructure, beginning with the assembly of scaffoldings for the construction of PVC hollow slab girders. 
Construction of the substructures was completed by the middle of October 2021, and the overall reconstruction was 40.3% complete at the end of October. The project for the reconstruction of bridges in the Cullisac Basin aims to mitigate against the severe flooding that occurs in St. Lucia's second largest floodplain. A grant agreement to finance the project was made between the government of St. Lucia and Japanese International Corporation Agency, JICA, on August 2017. JICA is the executing agency of the grant aid for the project. The reconstruction is on course to be completed 21 months from March 1, 2021, commencement date. Meanwhile, the Department of Infrastructure continues to caution minibus operators to utilize the lay-by along the Millennium Highway for the boarding and disembarking of commuters and not the cul-de-sac Millennium Highway intersection. Commuters are likewise cautioned to await buses on the lay-by. Despite previous warnings, minibus operators have continued to stop near the intersection and in one instance a motor vehicular accident involving a minibus occurred on Monday, November 1. The Ministry of Infrastructure is working closely with law enforcement to ensure adherence to the relevant signage. The Boys Training Center is the beneficiary of football gear donated by the U.S.-based organization Free Kick Foundation. More from Chevroy Marius. A U.S.-based registered charitable organization called the Free Kick Foundation demonstrated its support for the youth of St. Lucia by donating football supplies to the Boys Training Center, BTC. The new partnership was formalized with a handing over ceremony at the Boys Training Center at Grosily, where members of the foundation were greeted with the melodious sound of the BTC steel pan. Free Kick Foundation representative Aaron King expressed his willingness and gratitude in assisting the boys of the Boys Training Center to achieve their dreams. Through the pandemic, I, I had a conversation with Director Sonson and, and you know, we, we shared a, 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 a passion for helping, helping youth and helping people achieve their dreams. And, um, you know, we spoke about the different you know, needs of, of the facility and, and, I, and I made a promise to him then that, you know, I will get him, you know, worst case scenario, I'll get him a, a, a football kit. And today, you know, I'm able to make on that promise. And today I believe that it will be a part of a greater initiative going forward of Free Kick Foundation and the Boys Training Center to help them, you know, not only get the, inf the equipment that they need, but also to help these kids achieve their dreams. The supplies included full Joma football kits, which comprised of football shirts, football shorts, football socks, and water bottles. Manager of the Boys Training Center, Wang Sonson, expressed his gratitude to the Free Kick Foundation. When I looked at the uniform that our boys were wearing, you know, I said to the, I said to the coach, no, we need to do better than that. Um, because these, these, the uniforms that they had were uniforms that they had had for a, a period of time prior to going there. Since then, we've been on a drive to try and get uniforms for the center. I know that we have approached myself, the coach included, we have approached a number of persons who have made guarantees that they will be providing us with these uniforms, but it never materialized. And that is why I'm pleased today and I was always positive. From the time I, I, I met you and spoke to you from day one, Mr. King, I knew that it was something positive. And I was excited about that relationship. BTC coach Alvin Xavier also expressed similar gratitude to the foundation for the range of football supplies. On behalf of the boys, the wards, it's true some of the players who did the history not here, but it's still BTC. So on behalf of the boys, the wards, the staff, I personally, as a coach, I'd like to thank Free Kick Foundation because we have had many people who promise this, promise that, and we haven't seen anything. But Mr. Sonson told me he was so excited the day he talked to you. Coach, I just talked to Mr. King there and he promised us this and it. And to see, well, in a few months, look everything in front of us there, I'm overwhelmed because I know how tough it is trying to source a top brand like Juma. I personally will try to ensure that the boys youth utilize it in the most, you know, correct way. Without abusing it, making sure 
and try our best if we could bring a, a little success with it also. The Free Kick Foundation was founded in 2015 to provide for children born into economically disadvantaged communities with an avenue for growth and development through football and sports. Reporting from the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice and Empowerment, I am Chevroy Marius. This is NTN Nightly. Primus Hutchinson is up next. Stay with us. The Department of Finance has introduced the Electronic Government Procurement System, EGP. The EGP system has many benefits for stakeholders involved in government procurement. The government seeks to adopt a strategic approach to its purchasing process. Electronic government procurement improves efficiency of procurement and enhances data capture. The EGP is innovative and will automate the sequence from notification, receiving and evaluation of submissions to final contract award. It improves communication between vendors and government agencies, provides greater transparency and builds confidence in the vendor community through increased access to information. To participate, vendors, suppliers and contractors must register on the electronic government procurement platform. EGP, improving efficiency and transparency in the acquisition of goods, works and services. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquiole. Monsieur Tan, General, Monsieur, Madame, Department qui est responsable pour information à gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS, à ce même télévision nationale pays à NTN, qu'a posé ton nouvelle à Quayol, Monsieur Tan, Primus Hutchinson. Premier ministre cette ci on a Philippe Jepier, j'avoue, il y a un challenge pour ces chefs pays à la terre pour prendre action et pas perdre la cap pour sauver la vie de monde et l'environnement de la terre. Le Premier ministre Pierre présente l'appel à la à l'adresse pour une grande conférence mondiale à ce changement de climat qui a pris cours à Glasgow, un pays l'Angleterre. Ça, c'est la première conférence depuis après ça qui a pris cours à la ville de Paris, en France, en l'année 2015. Le Premier ministre Pierre veut dire que ça peut être la dernière chose qui nous dit pour sauver l'environnement de la terre. Le Premier ministre Pierre a fait un portrait pour montrer le danger à la terre qui la mer qui a monté à présent, et la situation côté de l'eau la mer qui a continué pour venir ici, et ça, ça c'est une mauvaise menace pour ce petit pays qui a développé. On a Pierre faire comprendre que la meilleure chose pour la terre à sauver, si ces grands pays a supporté l'effort pour servir l'énergie naturelle, par vent, soleil, et l'autre qualité façon comme ça. Il dit que pour voir qui a la main nous toutes et que c'est faux, nous placer toute attention à ce manière pour les hommes continuer pour vivre à bas un environnement qui s'en est sauve. Premier ministre Pierre Crié a sous ses chefs la terre pour délivrer à ce promet qui a été fait à Paris pour adresser ces divers problèmes de changement de climat. La tenue a promet qui a 100 millions de dollars de cahier en place pour ça. Et juste toujours, l'agence a la pour qu'on trouve un marché. Premier ministre Pierre remarque qui tout pays n'y a responsabilité pour adresser le changement de climat. Et qu'il a passé l'air pour ces décisions, décision ça a été fait en Paris pour venir en réalité. Le Premier ministre a crié en sous ses chefs de la terre pour considérer ce type pays qui a développé les citoyens côté y a une mauvaise faiblesse pour abattre le changement de climat qui est exposé pour et qui a réduit à sous la vie. Sérieusement. Il m'a dit, ce chef-là, est-ce un bon conscience yo, et une bonne responsabilité ni cher pour faire sacrifice et puis peuple la terre en faveur industrie Il m'a dit, est-ce que nous allons continuer pour ignorer la science et puis un coup de grande, mettre la vie jeunesse, femme et ses communes natales, secteur privé et l'autre organisation volontaire en Russie Le Premier ministre Pierre fait une référence pour le pays de Taïwan qui a apporté bon support pour tout pays qu'on s'est ici et qui a placé un pile l'intérêt à ce changement de climat. Mais juste toujours, pour qu'on s'est trouvé des gros acceptants à la terre. Le Premier ministre Pierre veut dire que ces jeunesses-là qui ont hérité la terre en tant que venir, qui ont venu nous, et que nous ne sommes pas désapprêtés. Alors, ce n'est pas pour nous sortir qu'on génération chef à la terre qui tenait des choses-là, 
pour régler la situation de la vie de la terre. Mais choisis plutôt pour ne pas placer le peuple nous premier. Le ministre de l'Éducation a informé le public là que, généralement, que l'implémentation, la première phase de saison de l'école pour l'année, c'était un grand succès. Ça, c'était pour Guadeloupe K, Guadeloupe 6, Forme 4 et 5, quand ils ont suivi l'école du WEC en chambre de l'école. Durant la période de le ministère de l'Éducation a continué les discussions et puis toutes les agences comme le ministère de la Santé, mettre et mettre l'école, le syndicat pour les instituts et mettre à l'école. Le ministère de l'Éducation aussi a noté que, comme les mois, ça c'est maladie corona, qui a continué pour prendre un descendant et ça a une cause pour épouvement généralement en situation de santé nationale, en considération que toute préparation qui est faite nécessaire, qui était nécessaire, j'ai fait, pour finaliser diverses activités. Le ministère a pris discussion et décision pour vivre, commencer la saison de l'école pour le restant de ces guades-là, et aussi il y a trouvé une licence spéciale d'éducation, et aussi c'est plus haut institution d'éducation pays là. Là, c'est le 8 novembre 2021, tout ça qui vient en opération. Mais, mettre et mettre l'école, qui est pour présenter plein d'opérations, il y a suivre à Baba Jid, qui est en place pour continuation du programme éducation en pays. Place à la, qui a servi les sons du web, côté la pénible les sons pour journée en Haïti. Le ministère de l'Éducation a encouragé le public là pour faire effort pour suivre ce protocole-là qui est en place par le ministère de la Santé. Selon le ministère de l'Éducation, nous, quand la maladie, la maladie corona, la maladie est descendant, ça a une bonne opportunité, et bien l'occasion pour les étudiants et les Grecs en système d'éducation pays là, ça a expérimenté ce bénéfice en leçon du web en chambre d'école. En continuation, adresse-le pour informer le public ici concernant le protocole nouveau pour la protection contre la maladie de corona. Le ministre de la Santé, Honorable Moses Jobatis, déclare qu'il y a ces quatre personnes seulement qui ont s'assemblé et que ça c'est si ils ont trouvé toute la vaccine. Ça c'est semblé pour une activité sociale. Si ils ont vacciné. Comme ça, si vous voulez faire une activité avec les personnes qui sont vaccinés, vous faites une application. Bay ministre là, fait application, voyez bay ministre là, avec ministre santé qui a regardé, c'est mon nom qui voulait venir en activité avec ministre santé qui a eu autorisation. L'église qui a une cérémonie, avec cérémonie, nous avons parlé de uh, cérémonie, a dit dans l'église là, qui a regardé, qui a été qui a été l'église là, avec si l'on a l'église là, de pour que ni distance là, yon moun um, pa pou top pou yon alot, de se l'église la sa ni cérémonie se yo. Evek, cérémonie kon maye, evek batem, evek, evek, um, le moun mo, evek, yo, yo ka fe uh, service pou l'éteman, ou sa ni evek yon sa moun à présent. Monsieur, madame, la ka yon pli information à sou se protocole nouveau sa la, à ce à l'autre nouvelle. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons trouvé nouvelle là, monsieur, madame. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je vous remercie encore. Si vous concevez la vie, vous pouvez vous présenter à nouvelle à Koyo. À présent, je vous remercie pour cette journée. Merci à Pearl Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.